working for me. I think we've got a close-up going here in the annex, so if you are listening to me on the regular Kitten Academy live stream, you should look uh, for the close-up right now. And if you can't find it, um, maybe it's not working. I don't know. Uh, if you do uh, see it, then say something on the chat just so I know we're all here and you can see cats and kittens. Meanwhile, I'm going to pretend like it's working. Um, so, uh, let's see here. We, uh, we've got our six little kittens and their mom cat, who is Scotty, right here. And I thought we would go and weigh them together this morning, which is something that we haven't done in a while. Uh, I've been trying to take care of them by uh, giving them uh, little supplemental feedings and stuff, and it's been keeping me real busy. Uh, and so I've been doing the weights myself, too, because they usually lead straight into the tube feedings, and I've got my hands full with the phone trying to chart down the weights and stuff. And uh, just doesn't... Uh, lend itself very well to doing close-ups and getting their weights. But last night uh, was the first time that I didn't have to do a feeding because uh, the weights were actually looking pretty okay. And we're just about to find out together whether they've stayed that way overnight or, uh, well, what, we're going to find out. So uh, let's do it. Let's see what we got. Uh, these are our six little kittens. And uh, this is our scale, which needs to be turned on. There we go. This one doesn't say hello. Uh, I switched to this one because I thought it might be a more accurate kitchen scale, uh, but it is not, actually. it's. Uh, I need to get the, the tiny gram scale from downstairs in the kitchen, the one that I use for my coffee if I want to do that, um, but uh, it's not important. So, okay. Uh, let's see. This looks like Pug, so Pug is going to be number one, boy. Uh, Pug is a, a little uh, boy, I believe. He's brown, as you can see, and he's one of the ones that has been uh, getting tube feedings because we've been trying to keep his weight up. And last night, he weighed in at 3.3, uh, which was a good record for him. And uh, it looks like what we're getting now is 3.2. So down a little. And uh, I would indicate that I would use that as an indication he needs to be fed by me this morning instead of just by his mom. However, uh, I'm willing to give him just a little bit of time to see if we can get him to go nurse on mom now. So uh, we'll try that out. Also, you can see mom gets very concerned when the kittens start yelling. She's a very good mom. Her name is Scotty. And um, yes, she's been doing a fantastic job. The first couple days, I think, were rough for her. And she wasn't picking up all the poop. And she maybe wasn't uh, getting them nursed quite as well as we would have liked. Um, but I think that now she's starting to get back into the swing of things and feel a little better, which is good, right? So anyway, um, I know our little boy Pug was 3.3 last night. He's 3.2 this morning. Uh, it is normal for them to go down a little bit overnight, though, so I don't know if I need to panic. And the real thing I'm going to do is look at his 24-hour gains. If they're still good, I might wait a little longer and see if we can get him to nurse and gain. Because in the long run, I'd much rather have him nursing from mom than doing feeding supplements. Uh, you know, and nursing from mom, or uh, just supplements and no nursing from mom, which would be the worst of all things. <laughs> anyway, all right, next up, I think we need to do, oh, by the way, I hope somebody's taking down these these weights because I'm not recording them. So if one of you would note that he's 3.2 and then let me know after the close-up on Discord, that would be swell. I'm looking for a Tuxi girl. Here she is. So this is the Tuxi girl. Uh, she is a chonker. Look at how chubby, and she's just a chubby little soft, fat um, kitten. Uh, very, very healthy and round and wonderful. So I'm not concerned about her weight in the least. Um, and we can tell that this is the girl and not the boy, and there's a couple ways to tell that uh, we've discovered. Uh, way number one is that she's wearing this tie. You see this shape in the middle of her chest. We're calling that a big old fat 80s tie that she's wearing. She also has uh, black on her chin, as you can see right there. And I was gonna say soul patch, but it's kind of connected, so it's more like a half beard, um, but whatever you want. So this is uh, B, by the way, uh, B as in Beagle, Beagle. So that's Beagle, and Beagle today weighs 6.1 ounces. Wow, 6.1 ounces for a Beagle. She is a big chonker. Um, and like I said, she's, she's just soft and fuzzy and wonderful. Uh, her eyes are still closed. They are, what, four days old today? I've lost track. I've got dad dad brain or something, but um, 
Uh, their eyes don't usually open until they're uh, roughly 10 days on average. So we could, I think the earliest we've ever seen eyes open are like day five, maybe four or five, which was super early. So don't expect that. Uh, 10 is more like the, the regular average. So it's way too early for them to have their eyes open. Uh, okay, so that's B, our little tuxy girl. And we also have, uh, and I'm going to get out of order here. Uh, whoever does give me the weights, if you put them in weight chart order, it does make my life easier, but it's not important. Um, uh, I just can't remember the weight chart order. So, uh, so we're going to go in whatever order comes to us. And so for that, we're going to get the other tuxy. This is our boy tuxy. Uh, boy tuxy is, oh boy, I hope I'm not wrong. Boy tuxy is Jack Russell, right? Tell me that's right. Uh, Jack Russell. And you can see he's also a chonker. He's beautiful and he's fat and, uh, and soft and fuzzy. And you can tell the difference because his chin is all white. And so is his, the middle of his chest is all white. He doesn't have a tie on and he's also not wearing a beard. So let's put our little boy uh, again. Uh, oh, I, I said Jack Russell, I think. Yep, Jack, okay, good. I see people in the chat confirming it. Thank you. So Jack Russell, that's our little boy. And he weighs 6.7. Oh my goodness, that is, he is a heavy boy. I took some pictures last night, by the way, and put them on our Twitter of our biggest boy, Jack, next to our smallest boy, uh, who was, I, or semi-smallest, I guess. Uh, it seems like um, uh, Bassett is, uh, was, is in competition with Pug for smallest. So which one is actually smallest varies from moment to moment, but they're both very tiny. Anyway, I posted some pictures of our biggest and our smallest together on Twitter last night. Oh, look, you can really see a classic tabby swirl right there, can't you? In his brown. Look at that. That's like an, that's like an uh, acro classic tabby uh, circle right on his side. Do you see it? That's, I don't think that's just the camera either. I can see it very clearly in person. So, And it's not just like his hair is pointed one direction. Definitely a little classic tabby swirl. So, uh, wow, they're going to be very interesting. I wonder if they're going to turn out to be more gray, black, or more orange uh, once they start to really pick up their color. Or if they stay brown, which would just blow my mind because I've never seen that. Um, anyway, okay, let's see. Uh, so we did Jack, we did B, and we did uh, Pug, which leaves us with... Uh, here, let's grab this guy before he latches on. So this is Bassett. He's the other small one who's been getting supplemental feedings. And you can see he's the only one that is brown and a tux. Um, so, <laughs> yes, and he's so very cute. And he's very tiny. And he's so skinny. Uh, let's see, 3.5. Oh, see, now that's really good because he was 3.4 at his last weigh-in last night. So he's up from last night on his own overnight. That's great. So... Uh, fingers crossed, we're just done with feeding him and he's gonna take it from here on out. He has a lot to say about that theory. Okay, well you get in there and keep doing what you're doing, pal, because it is working, all right? That's very good. So we're happy about Bassett. And uh, oh, that reminds me, I don't think we've done a close-up since this happened. DJ wrote them a note uh, so that they would get the idea. And even then, I don't know how DJ was aware of this because at the time she wrote the note two days ago, I was not, uh, I thought Bassett and Pug were on the same path but she was only concerned about Pug, and I had to remind her to mention Bassett even in the uh, in the postscript of her note, which is here. I don't think I showed this in a regular close-up. I showed it in one of the little, uh, you know, on the regular live stream, though, and I know people saw it, but isn't that cute? It says, Dear Puggle, please eat a ton of food and get pudgy. Love, DJ. P.S. Tell Bassett he can try the same thing, too. So I think they have gotten the message... Uh, because they both have posted some gains. Although, like I said this morning, uh, Pug's got to do a little bit better than he's doing so far. Uh, it looks like he is too. This is him right here. This is Pug latched on here. You can tell because he's all brown and he's very tiny. <laughs> okay, which by the way, uh, we've still got a couple kittens to look at. So we have one tiny kitten still to look at, which is this one, uh, I think, right in the middle. Yeah, this is her. This Theoretically, she is in the same weight class as our two little feeders. Uh, she was born in the same weight class as them. And if we're going on the theory that some of them are from a different father, oh, then she is from the different father uh, and a little premature. On the other hand, she's not looking at it right now. When I pick her up, she feels like one of the big boys. She's, she's sort of chonky and fuzzy the same way the big boys are. And uh, this, by the way, <laughs> is Palm, Pomeranian. And you can see 4.7. So she is sort of splitting the difference between the two weight classes of kittens that we have right now. Um, so that's Pomeranian. 
And she's, uh, we're saying she's all black. There are a couple tiny white spots, but they're not very evident yet. They might show up more when she gets older. And uh, Pomeranian had a lot to say about that too, didn't she? So that's, uh, that's very, very cute. So that's little Pom. Um, and uh, that leaves us with just one left, which is right here, I believe, the big brown boy. Uh, and he is big and he is brown. There we go. And uh, I always have trouble uh, with the name still. So give me, give me a second. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Hang on. Uh, our big brown boy is, um, oh, uh, Bernard. St. Bernard. St. Bernard. There we go. I got it. See, I said it. Uh, chat's behind too. So even if you guys said it, I still said it without any help. I just want you to know, the last note I see is Kelly Smith saying DJ's a wonderful person. Uh, and then MSC just said St. Bernard. Yeah, I got it, Emma. I got it. Okay. Anyway. So this is St. Bernard. St. Bernard weighs 5.7. Interesting. Okay. I thought uh, he was also going to have beaten six, but not quite. Still, he's doing very well. I just wanted to double check. He's also very upset about being out here, being weighed. Yes. Okay, good. Good job, buddy. No, you tell me. Tell me all about it. Okay, hang on, hang on. Mom's like, give him back. Give him back. Okay. I just wanted to try. Sometimes if I, like, put him right up on my nose or my face and sort of breathe in his face, it settles. he settles down, and he did. But then I had to start talking again <laughs> to his mom and to you, and he started yelling. So that's not going to work. Anyway, it was just a little check there to see how he was feeling. He's feeling fine. He just wants to go back to the pile. You can hardly blame him. Uh, okay, and then we have mom, of course, is Scotty, who we all know. And Scotty is just a sweetheart lover, sweetie, sweetie cat. And uh, every time I come in the room, she wants to know how I'm doing, and she wants to snuggle and cuddle, and she even wants to play. I was throwing her toys around yesterday, and she was chasing them a little bit. And you can tell she wants to do more, but she just hasn't got the energy. So she's still recovering from her, the childbirth, um, which she did great at, by the way. So you'll still see her panting a little bit here and there, but we have changed the temperature around quite a bit to cool things off too, to help uh, compensate a little. Uh, not too cool for the kittens, of course. We've got a heater pad under here for the kittens uh, to keep them warm. And then the rest of the room, we've lowered the temperature and to make it cool for mom to come out and hang out. So that's all good. So, uh, so the bottom line is that she is doing really well. Uh, the kids are doing really well. Everybody's got uh, good poops, good health. Um, and we're just, we're just generally pretty happy about all of it. So, uh, let's go see everybody else if we can. I just put a little curtain here to try to hold in a little bit of the warmth in the box for the kittens. So there we go. All right. Let's go see who else we can see. Got a lot of kittens to talk about today. Oh, so uh, I think I mentioned this too. When she was, before she delivered all of her kittens, she was very angry at the faculty at the door. So I put up pictures of all the faculty on the door to sort of get her used to it at the same time that we block her view. And then we had to put one over here on this door because they kept coming over to this door and she would get bothered. So here's little Tommy guarding. I just thought that was cute. Um, I haven't seen her getting upset even when Maggie's right outside the door since her kittens have been born. And I don't know if that means that now she's calmed down a little now that things have started to, to you know, readjust for her. Or uh, maybe she either just didn't notice that they were there or thinks that her best bet now is to just keep quiet. I don't know. Anyway, here we are. Hi, this is Bumble. Bumble is also a sweetie, sweetie. She loves uh, to be petted. And she loves to play. You can see she just had a little zoom when I came in. Uh, I think you saw it. Uh, she probably wants to zoom more. She's probably playing with Splotch right now, wherever Splotch is. So they are both doing really well, too. Splotch and Bumble. Oh, that's Eddie down at the end of the hall. Splotch is, I mean, Bumble's watching him. Splotch has got to be in here somewhere. But I don't see her in her favorite places, which are usually... She's usually either in this bed or in this pod, uh, but she's not right now. So we're gonna have to look around for her. Uh, as far as Splotch, so first off, uh, Bumble, uh, wherever Bumble went, she is a sweetie, she's learning, she's getting along well with other cats. She just takes a long time to become 
comfortable with other cats. So whoever adopts her, I'm sorry, I'm walking back and forth. This camera work is great. Uh, whoever adopts her should be ready uh, for the idea that she might take a little time to get introduced to her new family. Uh, and she does not have an adopter yet, and it's, uh, I think it's my fault right now because I haven't either posted about her on our blog with pictures or opened the applications on our website for cats. So, I mean, how could she be adopted? Uh, and it's totally my fault, and it's, it is an important thing for me to get done as soon as I can. On the other hand, she's just such a sweetie and integrated so well, it hardly seems like there's a rush. Plus, she's a, she's, well, she's very young. She is still a, uh, an adult. So uh, it's not like there's a hurry to get her adopted while someone can still enjoy meeting her as a kitten, you know? Uh, but yeah, the fact is Bumble is still looking for an adopter. And in Bumble's case, Dawes probably would make a similar exception as they did with buttons uh, to apply on their website. But in general, Dawes says don't, don't apply for our kittens on the Dawes website, even though they are technically Dawes kittens. They want you to use our application, which I appreciate. Uh, here's Splash, by the way. She's down here watching the birds. That is one of her favorite things to do when she gets the chance is to come out here and watch the birds at the bird feeder. And the thing I was going to say about Splotch is that Splotch does have an adopter. The same person who was originally approved for her has been very patient and waiting. And uh, through all the little issues that we've had with Splotch, I've talked to the, her adopter and Splotch's adopter at every step has been like, I don't care. I love Splotch. And even if I have to take care of her my whole life, uh, you know, I mean, uh, obviously you have to take care of your whole life. That's not what I mean. I mean, even if she needs like special care uh, for her whole life, uh, I'm in for that. Like I'm down with it, whatever it takes. Uh, I love little Splotch and I'm committed to her. And I think that's a really great thing to hear. Um, so uh, I'm really excited about her eventually going to her new adopter who is going to be the perfect family for her. But she was supposed to be picked up by that adopter finally after all the stuff. Uh, by the way, Splotch, I believe, is in perfect health now. Uh, oh, here's little Bumble came down to take a look around. Uh, so I believe that she's in perfect health and her, uh, she's all ready to go for her adoption. And the adopter could not be getting a better, sweeter, healthier kitten. Um, but due to weather, they had to postpone the adoption that was going to be this weekend, I think probably just for another week, although we haven't officially said it yet. So uh, hard to say exactly how much longer Splotch is going to be with us, but uh, certainly we don't mind. She can stay here as long as she wants. She's getting along with everybody and healthy and happy. Now, she is also uh, going to be a little difficult to introduce to new cats. Her, the first thing that she'll do when she meets somebody new is usually to hiss at them. But as you can see, uh, after some introductions, she gets along great, and she, you can see she's getting along great with all the faculty. Um, she even gets along okay with Maggie. She's managed to negotiate that relationship somehow where Bumble does not, which is why uh, little Maggie is put up right now. And I don't know that Maggie and Bumble could ever get along, or, well, I'm sure they could. I'm confident they could, but it would probably take a lot of effort and training. So... I hear scraping coming from in here. I hope you didn't poop in there because that is not a litter box no matter how it looks. I am kind of surprised that nobody's pooped in there yet. It, it really does look like it should be. It's a little cat house. Uh, actually, it's a little rabbit house and it is sold as a rabbit house, but they sent it to us on accident when DJ ordered the cat house version, which is in the other room. Uh, so we have both now. See, they're both digging in there. That can't be good. Uh, I'll have to look at it after the close up. Oh, no, maybe they're just playing because she wouldn't lay down if it was pee that she was digging on. And she did just lay down. There must be a toy stuck in there, a little string or something. Okay, good. Whew. That's a relief. Yeah, Bumble's really been coming... Hi, did I say your name? Bumble's really been coming out of her shell lately. Um, as you can see, she's even down here hanging out with Eddie. Oh, yeah. Um, and I do think if, if somebody is thinking about adopting Bumble, definitely, you know, go ahead and apply on Dawes' site or wait for me to open it up really soon now or, you know, just keep it in mind, whatever. My point was going to be, though, that she is, uh, as far as cats go, she's young. Uh, she's a young adult. She likes to play. But mostly what she really likes more than anything uh, is to eat and to sleep, and she'd love to just have somebody that likes a couch potato cat that can hang out with them most of the time, 
and just uh, watch some TV and get petted, and then with occasional bouts of, uh, you know, absolute insanity play, of course. Uh, she does still get the zoomies, and it is important to work out your cat and to exercise them and to play with them and keep them stimulated, and she's going to need that, so, so don't get her if you just, you know, if you're like, I don't want to play with a cat, I just want absolutely no effort, uh, then there's no cat for that person, really. Uh, but, uh, but if you are on the low effort end, uh, I do think she's a low effort cat. Oh, <laughs> she just hit splotch for coming up on her. That's fine, though. It was still a fine interaction. Okay, uh, let's head in now and see. I'm sure you're waiting for the floofy kittens, uh, the townies. The townies had their first exploration time yesterday. I kind of wanted to do another one on the close-up today, but I, there's just no way to swing it. So that's why the gate's out and just laid on the floor because I'm going to be putting it up often for them to start exploring. I don't know how necessary, how long the gate's going to be necessary for, though, because the really good news is that Mom River met Loganberry through the gate at first yesterday and they touched noses and everything. She went right up to him and touched his nose and then they were both fine. They were both absolutely fine. She didn't mind a bit. She didn't hiss, growl, anything. Uh, no, no reaction, Just they, but they touched noses and then she just didn't react. So that's basically like the ultimate uh, cat uh, initial meeting when there's just no reaction from either of them. Uh, that's perfect. Um, so I have really uh, high hopes right now that as shy as she is, she's just scaredy, um, but actually gets along great with all cats. I actually haven't seen anything to suggest that she does have a problem with other cats. She's never uh, like been angry at the door for the faculty being there or uh, anything. I've never seen her react negatively to another cat. Uh, I mean... Uh, this, <laughs> she'll get all growly when her kids are, are playing with her and she doesn't want them to play. She gets very growly with them. Uh, but that's the worst that I've seen from her. So I do think uh, that she is uh, going to be okay with everybody, but I still want to take those introductions really slowly uh, so that if I'm wrong, we don't end up in a bad situation. <laughs> so just important to know, uh, like uh, to understand my own uh, fallibility. Like, I could be completely wrong about the impression I have of her, and she could prove it in a very bad way if I give her the opportunity, and we don't want that. Uh, so, anyway, uh, right now it seems like she's probably a real sweetheart and doesn't mind. Plus, uh, after all that, Logan did get right into her territory, and she just watched him from a distance, even when he was sort of interacting with her kids and sniffing them and uh, getting around a little bit, and she also did not react to that in any way uh, yesterday. So, again, it gives me a lot of hope, but the reason that I use Loganberry as the first introduction so often is because I know Loganberry is basically inoffensive to everybody and is never going to be the one causing trouble. He's, he's perfect on our side for introductions because he's always got that real neutral tone in an introduction and will uh, he'll, you know, like groom or lick you if, if you let him, uh, but he's never going to be the one that starts in an angry way. So Logan's perfect for the initial introduction. That's what we got yesterday, and that was good. Hopefully she stays that way all the way through Maggie. We'll see. So this is, uh, that's River, the mom cat, and then this is one of River's kids. This is Yurt. Yurt is one of the three boys that she has, uh, three boys and two girls, and you can tell Yurt from his yellow collar if you can see it underneath all of his floof. Uh, the other way you can tell it is his personality because he's always the first one to sort of come and see people and see what's going on with these people. Although that's changing really fast right now because we're working hard on getting these kittens to be appropriately socialized people lovers, and it's working. Uh, they're all getting much better uh, day by day. We can see the progress that they're making on uh, being less scared and more friendly and happy. Uh, although <laughs> you can see it is, that's a work in progress. Look, this guy, little guy right here is like, I'm going to run away. That's got to be Lodge, not just from a process of elimination, um, but because Lodge is probably one of the two toughest uh, in, as far as getting him to be not shy and getting him to be more social. Um, but he does very well, and he does especially well when treats are involved. Yes, see, Lodge, you can tell from the green collar, that's a Lodge. And uh, like I said, he's one of the two tough cases that is the hardest to get um, to just relax and enjoy time with me. 
Um, but having treats uh, it does greatly influence his opinion of me, uh, with apologies to Mitch Hedberg for that joke. Um, yeah, he says that about, it's a long story. Anyway, um, yeah, so whether or not I have treats, I find my opinion of kittens, I find kitten's opinion of me, uh, let's start over. I find kitten's opinion of me is very much influenced by whether or not I have baby food. Um, yeah, so you can see he's, he is friendly and he likes me and he'll sit here and let me pet him, but he's also looking for his opportunity to escape. Well, maybe a little less than I thought. Yeah, there we go. Okay, buddy. So that's Lodge, uh, and we're working on him. And that's big progress, too, by the way. He would not have put up with any of that on day one. So uh, he's doing quite well, in my opinion. Uh, okay, so we've, let's see. We've seen Yurt and Lodge. Uh, let's find, then, the other tough case is uh, uh, B, uh, the little black boy who, uh, whose name just is so hard for me every time. Bungalow. There we go. Bungalow. I got it. Uh, and uh, I don't even know where he is. He and Lodge are usually sort of competing for like first place shyest kitten. Um, and I guess, oh, here he is. This is little bungalow up here on the shelf, just taking a nap through all this. I didn't even see you up here, buddy. And he's with uh, Villa, who we'll get to next. So bungalow is the third boy. So we've met all three boys now. That's Yurt and uh, Lodge and Bungalow. Bungalow is the black kitten in the family. He's got a lot of gray in his coat right now, but uh, history tells us that that's likely to just all turn to black as he gets a little bit older. Uh, he is, of course, they're all long-haired, super floofy, floofy cats, just like their mom has, not just super floof, like she's got this weird, like Norwegian forest cat double coat thing going on that is rare. I don't, I don't know how many times we've seen it here, but it's not often. And I think her kids are going to turn out to have that same kind of like super floof uh, double coat thing going on, uh, but we'll see. Uh, meanwhile, you can see he's also shy, but also likes, he likes me a lot now. We've really got, uh, put a lot of work into that, a lot of baby food into it, and he does like me. And like I said, every day, every day we're getting a little less shy, a little more playful. They all came out to explore the living room yesterday. He was, of course, the shyest and the last one to do it, the least amount of exploration, but they did all get out there, and that was fun. So, okay, yes. All right. Yeah, they are woolly cats. You're, you know, I like that, that phrase. I don't think I've ever called a floofy cat woolly before, a long-haired cat woolly, but it really does have more of a woolly uh, sort of character to their fur than most long-haired cats do. And she is just soft. She's like petting a cloud. It's just so soft, and it's getting silkier every day. And if it shines up, if she gets a shine on it, she's going to look amazing. Um, but right now, it's just sort of a matte uh, texture to her fur and all the kittens, too. So she, they may just sort of be like a more matte, less shiny kitten type. Uh, although most kittens and cats shine up a lot. Uh, once they've been here for a little while, like uh, Bumby did. I don't know if you noticed, Bumby's like a, like an oil slick. Like she's just beautiful uh, black shine on her. I don't know if we caught it in this close-up, but I notice it all the time. All right, now we got the two girls left to talk about. And you can tell the boys from the girls at a glance because the girl, there we go, there's a boy and a girl. Oh, the girls are lighter gray and they don't have any brown really to speak of in their coats where the boys, uh, well, except for the black one, of course, but the two other boys, uh, are uh, darker tabby color with brown in them and not just gray. So easy to tell boys from girls at a glance, not always easy to tell who's who after that. So this is girl, uh, this is, okay, red collar is Villa. And I think Villa's in second place as far as being most social, really. Although second place there is kind of a competition between the two, oh, did you see that? Between the two girls who are uh, uh, Villa here, and then uh, the other one is with the purple collar. Um, uh, oh, Chalet, Chalet. We'll come back to her, though. That's Chalet. Um, but we'll come back to her. This is Villa. Villa's being a little squirmy right now because Villa wants to be playing, but I just wanted to show you her cutie cute face. There we go. Okay, yeah, I know. You want to go play. But normally Villa is in, uh, like I said, competition with Chalet, um, I think for sort of second place, most social. So, oh, oh, oops. Oh, okay. And like I said, we're working on all that. I can't show you behind this curtain because it is disgusting. That's where the litter mat is and they've, they've made little stains on it and stuff as you do. Hang on. Okay. 
I'm trying to get to Chalet so that you can see her. Here we go, come here. She's usually a little bit more willing to be interviewed. So Chalet has the lavender or <clears throat> purple collar. And other than the purple collar, pretty much the identical twin of her sister, uh, Villa, who's right here, by the way. So you can see how much it's like that Spider-Man meme. They just need to point at each other. Uh, you, you, you. Okay, well, that didn't quite work. Um, <laughs> I need three ants. I need some, like the Z-Fod uh third arm installed. Uh, okay. Anyway, so yeah, okay, I don't know what else I can say about Shelley. She's just a cutie, sweetie, fuzzy, floofy, just like all the rest, and uh, somewhat semi-social, uh, and we're working on it. So there you go. Uh, with that, my little clock here tells me that we've made it 30 minutes, and that's just about the right amount of time, so we should probably wrap this up. Uh, let me remind you that you can watch these kittens and the ones upstairs all day long on the regular Kitten Academy live stream. And I hope you do, but if you don't, we'll do more close-ups. I just can't promise when. I've been crazy busy. I'm playing catch-up all the time uh, recently. And I know eventually I will get caught up, or at least caught up enough that I, I don't have to let you guys constantly know how far behind I am. Um, but I'm not there yet. So uh, please definitely try to be a little understanding. And if you really need to see these kittens, tune into the Kitten Academy live stream. And uh, if, you, if you are really just jonesing for a fix and not getting what you need from me, I apologize. Uh, my only other recommendation is maybe to, to uh, join our Patreon, uh, which I hate to shill because it does cost money and I apologize for that. But on the Discord, uh, there's obviously a lot of people who are also enjoying the kittens and you get to see little gifts and uh, stuff that is not exclusive. It, by no means is it exclusive, but it is a good place to go if you need a fix. So that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, what else, what else, what else? I think that's it for news, because the news is Bumble still needs an adopter, but I haven't even really, uh, you know, officially asked for that yet. Um, Splotch has an adopter, but we don't know exactly when she's going home. And then everybody else is in pretty good health. Uh, a couple kittens we're still watching, and, uh, and, and we're just happy and carrying on right now. No news is good news, really. That's what I like. So it's, it's good to have close-ups where there's nothing important to tell you. <laughs> all right, everybody. I will talk to all of you next time. Hi, bud. Now they're waking up. See, now it's going to get entertaining. I guess that's another reason to tune into the regular live stream. Sorry. All right, I'm just going to turn that camera and put it on the regular stream if they're going to keep playing back here. You get a pretty good view from, I mean, the real camera's right there. It's not that much of a difference from what I'm holding. Okay. Thanks, everybody.